Foot Clan, it's the first of the offseason. Makalaka, ding dong, it is mock draft time, as well as, as laying out some best ball tips. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave us a comment on who, the players that we should have drafted. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, May 26th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, and the Deucers. Just deucing. Hidden in darkness beyond the screens, a collective of dark-souled individuals mm. pushing buttons. Pulling levers. levers. Yeah. I love Michael Keaton. Mm, me too. Uh, there, are some, <laughs> there are some pulleys. There's a big wheel that they have to spin every few minutes. Another wheel they run in. Oh, well, like a hamster wheel? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But we like them. <laughs> <laughs> we got a real low energy open today. I guess. Hey, well, one of them's getting married today. Right? Oh, yes. Big ups. That is actually true. Can I redo the open to be more positive <laughs> on like, his we just, wedding day? We just made it more positive. Oh, Congratulations, this. Brooksy. The, oh, yeah. The, the day Foot of Clan. Brooks wedding. <laughs> the Foot Clan is uh, excited for you. We're excited for you. I big, assume, big day. I big assume day. it's on a yacht. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, well, he's going to take his yacht to his. Super yachts. Right. I mean, you got to get to the yeah. super yachts somehow. It's a somehow. transition yacht. Yeah. <laughs> right. A transition um, yacht. I can't reveal any details. Which yacht are you getting married on? <laughs> the transition yacht I, or the regular one? I can't reveal any details. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, guys. Yeah. But congratulations, Brooks. We're excited for you. And, um, you know, now May 26th, it's your day. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Today is our first mock. Draft. Oh, it's episode. no longer Brooksy's oh, day. That's even better than Brooks <laughs> getting married. It's a mock draft show. His wife did perform a mock draft before <laughs> selecting Brooks 101. Oh. Uh, but there were others in contention. Of course. But with more injury risk. So Brooks is more, he's been very durable over the course of his career. And so sometimes that goes a long way. Yeah, you don't get hurt on the bench. Um,. <laughs> Oh, man. I can. Uh, yeah, you, other people. Uh, we also have a best ball segment today presented by Underdog Fantasy, breaking down some tips, tricks. We'll be doing this over the next few months. Best ball is huge. It's a lot of fun. We'll be talking about that. Jason, the ultimate draft kit. Oh, baby. So this is what, like, it's, it's really hard to even remove myself from the ultimate draft kit right now because this is what we have been – pouring all of our time and resources into we are under a week until it releases we are still in the middle of recording a hundred profile videos to break down each and every important player that you're going to care about you could see our opinion see where we agree see where we disagree get a little nuance to it all of the ultimate draft kit has been upgraded your cheat sheets which i am using for today's mock draft are excellent they are customizable if you are in an auction league there's no place that has better auction values now. You could customize it to your team, your league size, your roster construction. We will do the calculations perfectly on the uh, auction value amount. So there's there's just so much goodness in there. And you can get the UDK Plus. If you want to get that now, you get it at the cheapest possible price. And yet you don't have to wait long for it to come out because it's out in under a week. UltimateDraftKit.com. And, and let me just say this. I'm not surprised you're using my rankings for today's mock draft. Oh, man. That that was a huge mistake. It almost <laughs> it almost went poorly. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow the show. The community is jointhefoot.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. The Arizona Cardinals signed running back Darrell Williams, formerly of the Chiefs. 
surprisingly, I think to a lot of people, a very valuable member of the Chiefs last year, over 1,000 yards, uh, combined yardage, uh, caught a ton of passes, 57 targets, was the 12th most in the NFL, caught 47 of them, and joins an Arizona team that desperately needed a depth piece behind James Conner. This does, I mean, this is a meaningful signing to me, not because Daryl sure. Williams will be valuable for fantasy, although he will if James Conner is hurt, but because Daryl Williams can catch the football. And if you want to protect James Conner from injury, you're going to spell him, and Daryl can spell him on a very important third down. Yeah, a good example is I, I, I hate putting any value to round six, round seven running backs. They just never have value, and yet Keontae Ingram, uh, the, who the Cardinals drafted at the end of the draft, it was – he he had relevance here because you know Connor's probably going to miss a couple games, and the next man up will have value, and uh, there really wasn't another player. So this is a great depth pick. I think he's going to come in and have 75% of what Chase Edmonds had, which took James Connor down a little bit in my rankings because when it was just James Connor there, there just there wasn't a choice but to give him unfathomable workload every game that he plays. Now they can, you know, take – a handful of carries away, which hopefully means more games played. I think it's also interesting from the aspect of the Kansas City Chiefs where you're saying, Andy, like Williams was a big part of this offense this past year, especially uh, in, in the pass catching game. And we, as of the time of this recording, we don't have the contract information here for Daryl. Hard to imagine that at the back of May, once all the free agent frenzy has, has hit, and the money has mostly dried up that it's a contract of of any true note. But Kansas City just let him go. Like, it, it, what I'm saying, I they probably could have gotten back for not very uh, not a big cap hit for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're going to move forward with, with Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Ronald Jones. And it's just, if you were, if you're into Clyde, it his, the pass-catching part of the game seems a little bit safer now. I agree with that. Derek Gore will be involved in the running game as well in Kansas City. I think that's part of why they let him go is Derek Gore came into a few games last year and will be in that third spot. Speaking at OTAs, 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan, he said this on Jimmy Garoppolo. I expect at some time he'll be traded, but it's not a guarantee. It went on hold when the surgery happened. It means a lot for Kyle Shanahan to come out and just verbalize the plan is to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Yes, this this is the plan. I, I assume that when he was talking, it went something like this, Kyle Shanahan. I expect at some time he'll be traded. Oh, crap. I should not have said that part out loud. Uh, so then he threw in the, well, oh, it's not a guarantee. It, it is great to have him say this, though, because what it says clearly is that he'll be right traded. now no. Kyle Shanahan <laughs> is prepared. I mean, they're already – in, yes. This is this isn't you know They're February right now. They're in OTAs. They are making their plans and preparations and and you know game planning. Trey Lance as as the starting quarterback. Uh, so that that to me says that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to get cut because they I don't I don't know yes. that anybody's going to actually trade for him. Interesting. Yeah. Get ready for the hype trains. They're all going to begin. OTAs is a uh, just the beginning of the. Snowball effect of, of hearing news and information. I've already seen Trey Lance's accuracy in seven on seven drills um, all over Twitter. So, and was it good? Yeah, Mike, yeah, it was. It was very right, good. It was. Seven on seven. This hype train's already filling up the coal. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, About it's to been, start shoveling. I mean, the train, it's been on. You need more coal because it's been on the tracks for like, I don't know, a year and a half now. Yeah, we, we got stuck in the station, but pretty soon we're going to grab those logs from uh, Back to the Future. Throw, oh, the, the, throw them into the engine, yeah, and then yeah. we're gonna take off. Oh, that's good. it's good, Mike. I'm, I'm, you are <laughs> definitely the engineer of that train, and I leapt off a while back. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually about to get on, and I ripped my ticket up and ran the other <laughs> direction. Uh, Ron Rivera coming out at OTAs talking about Terry McLaurin's contract. He said it's just a matter of time. That was the confidence level on Terry McLaurin getting an extension. And having him back, he was not working with the team in OTAs. That's not very surprising. Anybody in a contract dispute is not going to show up to a voluntary workout. Right. Or very rarely do they, unless things are about to put pen to paper. 
Any other news, Brooksy, before we start the mock? Let's mock. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. What was that? That was uh, that was a that guttural. A, that was not a roar. It was a yeah no. It was a deep down f- dark. Oh, that feeling. was one hundred percent a hairball. No, no, that was that was that was Mike, a guttural. Are excitement. you with me on this? That did that was something from your gut. I didn't hear hairball. I heard more of like dragon vomit. Right. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Not Thank regular, you. but dragon version. Oh, yeah. was, oh, I mean, oh. it was it was monstrous. There was a gurgle in it. Yeah, yeah. I've never Thank gurgled you. with surprise or with joy. Have yeah. you never heard a dragon vomit? No, you uh, have now. Head to head to head mock draft today. Maka laka ding dong. Yeah. No, thank uh, you, producers. Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are we just? Is this because you're getting married? You just feel. Is that the gift? Oh, is, can man. that be our wedding gift? Yeah, you get to do whatever you want. Who, who hit that button? Was it Brooks or was it Al? I physically hit the bro- button, but Brooks was the one that. Oh, so it's both of you. Cornered Jason do it in again. the studio and made him record it. Do yeah. it again. Maka laka ding dong. Yeah, well, we're, we're doing good work here. All right, <laughs> draft spots for today's mock. Oh, goodness. Randomly assigned. I ended up with the fourth pick. Jason with the twelfth pick. Hmm. Mike at number nine. So, twelve team half PPR mock. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. We're going to be holding this mock on sleeper, so you'll be able to see the draft board if you're watching on YouTube. Or if you're listening, you can go back and look at all the picks. And we'll see how this goes. Let's begin. Christian McCaffrey off the board at 101. Jonathan Taylor at 102. Derek Henry at 103. Seems pretty straightforward. Yep. I, I think most leagues will draft Jonathan Taylor ahead of Christian McCaffrey. But uh, those two guys will be one and two in most leagues. Henry at three, I got no problem with that. So I'm at 104, and I can make the decision to do what I traditionally do, which is, uh, you know, I'm looking at running back if I'm in that top six picks, really trying to strengthen my team in a position of scarcity. Uh, Austin Eckler jumps off the board. Dalvin Cook jumps off the board as players that could do that. But, look, we just talked about this on the Tuesday show. I'm actually going to uh, take the reach, potentially, for Cooper Cup here and see how that goes. That's what mock drafting is all about. Uh, experimenting with different scenarios. And so I'm going to do something I rarely do, take a wide receiver, one that is very secure, one that is safe in the first round, Cooper Cup at 104. Jason, I saw you kind of... uh, I I like it. I I like the fact that you're willing to... uh, You know, it's it's always, you know, year after year after year, the top five, six, seven picks or whatever, uh, they're always running backs. And... The value that Cooper Cup gave last year and the value I think he could give this year, the fact that uh, running backs are injured more often than wide receivers, I think it's a great pick. Austin Eckler at 105 after I took Cooper Cup. Dalvin Cook goes 106. Jamar Chase at 107. Justin Jefferson at 108. So it's actually a very interesting spot that you're in, Mike, where I feel like maybe the top tier running back, top tier of wide receivers are gone. Do you agree? Uh, I agree. I made a uh, – I had to crinkle the nose in disgust there as Justin Jefferson went right in front of me. That had – That had been, that, that was, been your pick? Yeah, that was the the plan of, okay, well, let's get a an elite top-tier wide receiver, a little bit safer than these running backs because the, the guys that I would really want, they, they go at the top of the draft. So now on the board, the highest guys left for me, the wide receiver, would be – it would be Devontae Adams, who I still believe in the talent, and I think Derek Carr can get enough done for for Devontae Adams to still be pretty great. And at the running back position, he's still pretty high on my board, and that's Alvin Kamara. And so that is the direction I'm going to go, but that is a that feels like a, a riskier pick here already at the 109 to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a valuable pick and the right one. Kamara has... Uh just been so consistent over time and is a lot less risky in my opinion than the pick that went right after you DeAndre Swift to uh, in Detroit went at 110 Jason I think wanted him I did Travis Kelsey goes in the first round at 111 you've got Mm. back-to-back picks here in a snake draft so you're telling me Kelsey will not make it back to my next pick that is that is correct yeah I wrote down the players I was hoping 
got to me. First of all, I hate- Why did you write their names so big? Because uh, <laughs> so, it could be red. I, so it could be red. <laughs> um, by you. So That's not a small note. <laughs> no, it's- it says what, what? Diggs, Diggs and Swift in size uh, 36 font. Those were who I was hoping got to me. Uh, I, I do think Swift, like I totally recognize the danger oh. of DeAndre Swift, whether he can play a full season, whether the Detroit Lions are actually, you know, cosmically allowed to have a running back succeed sure. post Barry Sanders for a season. Um, but I, I, I love what we saw from Swift last year. I think the Lions are going to be improved. very good. And I'm willing to take the risk. I hate the 12 spot, but that's where I find myself. I'm going to take uh, Sw- uh, Diggs first. Uh, I, I find myself really higher on Diggs than I think. I mean, just look how big he wrote his name. Consensus, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no doubt you love him. You, know, you said Font 36. I think that was a little disrespectful. It was a 48. It was at least 48. <laughs> okay. um, and I did put him first over Swift. I wanted Swift. Since I can't get him, I'm going to take the next highest running back on my board. At the 12 spot, I don't usually like how my teams end up when I go running back, running back, or wide receiver, wide receiver, unless I'm going zero RB. So I'm going to take one of each here, and I'm going to take Joe Mixon here in the second round over Najee Harris. Um, so Mixon and Diggs will start my my team. Okay, Mike, you took Kamara at 109. It's back to you in the second round after Joe Mixon. Jason's running back one. Najee Harris went, and then Josh Allen went at 203. Not surprising Oof. to me. I, I think you will see this in a, a ton of uh, drafts. Yes. So Josh Allen at 203. I think for Mike, based on what I know of you, which is far too much. Mm-hmm. Um, Agreed. Josh Allen going right before you is just a way of passing down value. It did. Yeah. So it, it, you still have a choice of Devontae Adams. Uh, you could take him here. You could go uh, one of the other wide receivers, Tyreek, CD, A.J. Brown, et cetera. Where are you, where's your head? Uh, so at the running backs, you know, there's – There it is. Sorry. Whoa, well, yeah. Uh, my big, big head. Uh, at the running back position, there's still really interesting players, Javante. Aaron Jones. I personally am still in on Zeke. I think he can still be a uh, running back one with with the chance of slipping into the top five if the touchdowns go his way. But I was already torn between Devontae mm. Adams and Alvin Kamara, so I'm, that made it easier for me, knowing the, the plan moving forward should Devontae Adams drop makes it easier. Yeah, that was uh, fortuitous for you, Mike. Kamara and Adams, those are two players that you know, 109, 204, that is not a place that they've lived for a very long time. Right. Tyreek Hill went right after Adams, also a player that has not been quite that far down the board in a while. Nick Chubb went at 206. And the next pick is, I think, a great pick. If you're in the middle of your draft, the second round, Mark Andrews, I think, is a phenomenal spot to grab him. I hope he stays right around here for, for draft season. But Travis Kelsey's been, you know, the first round pick. We saw him go as high as like 105 last year. Definitely never getting out of the back of the first round. I think Travis Kelsey still goes ahead of Andrews, which pushes Andrews down into the middle of the second round. I think Andrews finishes ahead of Kelsey this year. So I, I, I questioned whether you were going to take him uh, at the 204, Mike. I, it, looking back at it now, I should have thought about Andrews a little bit longer because now I'm thinking just through strategically. I like Darren Waller. Uh, I mean. You know, uh, Andrews and Travis Kelsey, elite, elite. I think Waller's going to be okay. But having taken Devontae Adams here, should Darren Waller even somehow fall to me at the 309? Like, uh, that I don't know. You don't want that much I, Derek Carr. There's too much Derek Carr. You can have uh, too much. Yes. So it just that's something to think about strategically, that if you're in on Devontae Adams, it may affect you, you wanting to have Darren Waller, which – then at that point, I'm into the the garbage heap already of the tight end position. Andrews went at 207. Debo, Samuel, goes at 208 in this draft. It's back to me. I took Cooper Cup in the first round. There is only one running back remaining here that is in a higher tier oh, than the rest yes. for me, and it's Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones will be my pick here at 209. I think he has an elite season in him this season. An elite season in him this season. Mm-hmm. I mean, a you word, want to repeat a word that smack. word. <laughs> um, 
No, I mean, Devontae Adams departs, and Aaron Jones is a trustworthy asset in the passing game. I'm excited about him this year. Saquon goes next. CeeDee Lamb goes at 211. A.J. Brown at 212. Going to be very curious to see where A.J. Brown goes with the new jersey on. Javante Williams at 301. Patrick Mahomes at 302. And Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, hello. Kyle Pitts ahead of Darren Waller. That is a pit steak. That is I think oh, I think people are man. going to Yeah. All right. I I would have I think the crickets were more in line. <laughs> I don't have them available. But uh I Kyle Pitts is going to be overdrafted this year. That's that's my personal belief. What's difficult in evaluating that is when you let's let's do this. Let's look at the other wide receiver options available at this point. Mike Evans is there. Right, mm-hmm. and so he's he's going to be good for about a thousand yards, probably d- double digit touchdowns. Beyond Mike William or Mike Evans, you know you've got Keenan Allen, I think T. Higgins. Deontay Johnson, T. Higgins, but the adva- T. Higgins versus what Kyle Pitts could be as an advantage for you at tight end. That's where the debate begins, in my opinion, because we talked about T. Higgins on the Tuesday show. If he or, or sorry, we talked about him recently, and if he's a thousand and five, I'll take a thousand and five from Pitts at tight end. Way over T. Higgins at a thousand and five. Now, obviously, if he's better than that, it's a mistake. But you're looking at positional advantage being the motivator for a Pitts, Andrews, Kelsey, Waller decision. I I would agree with that. My I don't take umbrage with taking a tight end at that spot if you believe that they're more valuable than a T. Higgins. What I I I think that taking Pitts over a George Kittle and over a Darren Waller that's where the, the mistake, mistake is being made. Sure, no, that's fair. Uh, sitting here in the third round, tough decision whether to go back to the running back well. I have to wait a long time. It's drying up. And so if I'm there, I'm looking at Zeke. I'm looking at Fournette. And then you're down into Akers. And, you know, Connor's interesting here, James Connor. But the uh, does that recent signing take some shine off? A, I a Not little, much. A not much. <sighs> I'm going to take Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, cool. good for you. Uh, I think when you have Aaron Jones, if there's one thing you know about him, it's some spike weeks when the passing game, the passing work is there. And then you're going to have some weeks where you're like, man, why'd they give the ball to A.J. Dillon down there on the goal line when I hoped Aaron Jones had it? Zeke will stabilize the backfield. You know, I know production's coming from Cooper Cup. Zeke's not going to win me a lot of weeks, but he ain't going to lose me any of them. And then Aaron Jones has that boom-bust potential. So I will stick with running back. It was very close to going Mike Evans there, but Evans goes right after me. Then Gibson, Waller. So you don't get a shot at Waller, not that you wanted it, Mike. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic for me. And then uh, Deontay Johnson. And then, Mike, you're back on the clock. I will take the running back that if I were Andy, I would have selected him at the 304. I don't think that the, the shine has been removed too much by Daryl Williams and the range of outcomes here for James Conner. If he keeps getting those carries inside the five, like top five potential exists for him in, with the passing work and the, the goal line opportunity. Fournette goes next, then Keenan Allen. I'm sure Jason wanted one of those players. Uh, I did want Connor or How uh, big did you Fournette? write the names this round? Well, they're, they're still very this large. This time I wrote it about, you know, this might be the 36 size font. Um, but, yeah, I was looking at Higgins, James Connor, Leonard Fournette, and George Kittle as – the four pack that I was hoping got to me, James Conner, Leonard Fournette, just going. So, you know, I don't like the wide receivers past T. Higgins that much. You drop down to the DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, DK Metcalf quarterback questions. Like, they're great. Those are three great wide receivers, but I don't want to deal with the quarterback questions. Same with even Amari Cooper, where it's like, okay, how much – and what point in the year at at this point, it, 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 who's his quarterback? So I'm going to take T. Higgins. I think pairing Higgins with Diggs, I like that. Um, at running back. You got two bangles. I do have two bangles, and I'm fine with that. Joe Burrow, lead the way. Uh, now at running back, it, it's it's getting dicey. You should draft James Conner. <laughs> I would love to draft James Conner or Leonard Fournette. They are darlings at the three four turn they are not there i don't think i'm willing to reach for Brees hall or them so i'm gonna go and grab george kittle yeah uh, someone someone that i think could compete for that number one spot 
Your team so far, Diggs and Higgins at wide receiver, Joe Mixon at running back, George Kittle at tight end. Terry McLaurin, Josh Jacobs went next. We'll take a quick break and then get into Mike's pick. Just for the record, and I know you just listened to some advertising. Yeah. Uh, that was not a quick bake. <laughs> just so you know, that was a break. Uh, I'm not a quick bake. I Those are very a, different. I thought it was a beak. Martavis like, Bryant is not here with us today. <laughs> quick um, we did that already on the show a long time ago. But, Mike, you are back on the clock. Kamara, Con right. Kamara Connor and Devontae Adams from the 109 is going to make people want to draft from the 109. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, if Jason had not taken George Kittle, he would have been in very strong contention here for me as the – as I get – what I was saying, you know, you're into the tight end garbage. Like Kittle is still someone who, to me, can represents a top-tier value. At the wide – I'm and I, I think I'm pretty good here at running back. Acres, maybe, you know, like the, the upside is there. But so is the downside of if he keeps playing the way that he played. So I'm look, I'm back to the wide receiver position. Guys, DK Metcalf, who, goodness gracious, if he had a good quarterback, this that would be a very easy pick. Unfortunately, you like Metcalf, DJ Moore. The quarterback's position is not great. Amari Cooper, uh, I think we're still too early to to know what his situation is as well. And I actually have to go down the ADP chart a little bit here, and that doesn't bother me at all. Because Rome was not built in a day. And when you're building the city, you got to – Yeah, there it is. You got to draft my dude, Michael Pittman, who has, in my opinion, wide receiver one upside. You saw the real breakout. You saw a tremendous jump in the target share. And there's just – there's no one on that depth chart that I believe that can actually challenge Michael Pittman. And Matt Ryan is an upgrade at the quarterback position. I'm just so impressed that the producers got that drop that quick, look, which man. makes me wonder: Did you tease it? Did you let him know? I uh, look secret. You'll never know. Oh, secrets. Okay. So you went with Michael <laughs> Pittman. David Montgomery went next, which I think, based on my rankings, is a steal at 405. DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, the quarterback question crew, back to back in the fourth round. J.K. Dobbins at 408. That's interesting. Look, that's a nerve-wracking pick in the third round. It's probably a nice pick in the fourth round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with David Montgomery, J.K. Dobbins going, it's still a round and a half to me. The George Kittle pick is already making me hold my breath. It's like, <laughs> when, you're, when you're at the turn and you've got, you know, 24 picks between you, uh, it, it just – it's so hard to not have – two running backs leaving that three four turn i don't think i caught mike's line of secrets are secrets <laughs> ah an adage he follows up rome is not built in a day very famous uh, yeah. quote with secrets are well see here's secrets. what you do is you you pick a famous quote and then you throw in your own mm. and then you you build up a steam of your quote call that a piggyback yes yeah yeah so here's an interesting play that i'm about to to make here in this draft. I went with Cooper Cup to start the draft. Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott. What I want to happen at 409 and 504 is I want to end up with the Justin Herbert and Mike Williams stack. Ooh. So if I'm sitting here in a draft and I'm looking at this, Josh Allen's off the board. Patrick Mahomes is off the board. Uh, one of the teams that drafts twice ahead of me has Patrick Mahomes. So there's only two teams, team one and team three, that could potentially take a quarterback here. But Mike Williams' ADP is much lower than Justin Herbert's ADP relative to this spot. So Fair. I still think taking Herbert first, coming back with Mike Williams, is going to be the way to secure him. I thought you were going to make the argument that you were going to bypass Herbert, and I do not believe he would have got back to you at the 504. Uh, we'll never know. Uh, cause you took him, you coward. <laughs> I was, I am a coward. I didn't want, even though I would feel more oh. comfortable. Well, let, let, let's walk this through. Cause you might've been wrong. Uh, all right. Uh, Cam Akers went next. I took Justin Herbert at the four Oh nine. Brees Hall, Jalen Waddle, Omari <clears throat> Cooper, Jerry Judy, 
Lamar Jackson. So mm. that Lamar Jackson pick could have very well been Justin Herbert. That would have felt bad. I really enjoy, just from a fantasy player perspective, I enjoy the stacked wide receiver quarterback, but I don't want to work for that in the top of a draft ever. But when I'm getting to the fourth and fifth round and a player like Mike Williams, who I think two of us have him as a top 10 wide receiver this year, mm -hmm. I'm so excited for this team. I take Mike Williams here at 504. He pairs with Cooper Cup. Again, I'm, I see some balance here on this roster where Jones is going to have spike weeks. Mike Williams is going to have spike weeks. But then Cooper Cup, Ezekiel Elliott, and then Justin Herbert, who, you know, Herbert over the back half of last year, his fantasy finishes at the position weren't just good. They were great. I mean, he was a 5,200-yard, 40-plus touchdown pace, 2, 1, 6, 3, 6, 5, 9, 12, 2. He didn't have a week outside the top 12 over the back half of the year. So um, I managed to put the stack together. Michael Thomas goes next. Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow. I mean, a three three quarterbacks going after Justin Herbert here. And then Travis Etienne at 508. Mike, you're back on the clock. So, Andy, your team is Cooper Cup, Aaron Jones, Zeke, Herbert, and Williams. I have Kamara, Devontae Adams, James Conner, Pittman. And Jason has Stephon Diggs, Mixon, Higgins, and George Kittle. All right, and so we are now into the fifth round. This is where you can find some uh, some of that scrumptious value at the wide receiver position. Very frequently, wide receivers here who end up taking a true leap. And I'm going with a player that I think the talent has existed. Mm -hmm. And he got a massive upgrade at the quarterback position. It's very, it's not very often you see uh, future Hall of Fame quarterbacks moving teams. Funny enough, this team actually already saw that happen with Peyton Manning. But I'm going to take Cortland Sutton. Uh, the, the debate of the Broncos wide receivers, it will be very interesting through the offseason. Jerry Judy went earlier in this round. My chips are on Cortland Sutton. Uh, he had a true breakout campaign as a sophomore with 1,100-plus yards. And we know that Russ is going to be good for close to 4,000. He's going to throw over uh, 30 passing touchdowns. And now with the new offense here, he could be truly unleashed. What is interesting to me, just making an observation on your team, Mike, two running backs, three wide receivers – all three of your wide receivers have no familiarity with their quarterbacks. Sure. Devontae Adams joining Derek Carr, Michael Pittman with Matt Ryan, and then now Cortland Sutton with Russell Wilson. It's going to be interesting to see how all of those situations play out. There is upside and downside arguments to be made for all of them, uh, but it's going to be going to be very interesting. TJ Hawkinson at 5'10", DeAndre Hopkins at 5'11". What no, size font you. are you writing your notes there, Jason? Mm. Uh, they're they're getting smaller and smaller uh, as the players your, get worse. And oh, worse. so it was the confidence exactly. It's it was tier based uh, font uh, size. Tier based font size. <laughs> it's a new feature in the ultimate draft kit. You'll be able to read the good players' names far easier, allowing you to draft them. We, we shrink the font sizes on players we want you to avoid because right. if you can't see them in your draft, you can't take them. But printing printing it out is going to take. 95 oh, it's take, pieces of paper. There's a forest going down every time you. <laughs> the nice, the nice thing though is that you know the last hundred players print on like a quarter of a sheet. Right. That's right. Um, but it's jaw n a thin mm -hmm. Taylor. Right, four sheets of paper. Yes. Um, okay, so here I am. I am happy that one running back fell to me because I uh, there's not a lot of running backs that I like left on the board. The fact that I only had Joe Mixon at the 12 spot thanks to drafting a tight end earlier um, means I was really, really sweating it. This is not a guy I'm trying to get my hands on. I'm very afraid of him. But Clyde Edwards-Alaire, we, we talked about the, the fact of Daryl Williams, very involved in the passing game, has left. Tyree Kill, obviously very involved in the passing game, has left. Vacated targets usually go to the running back. So I think when I'm talking about the fifth, sixth round here, uh, Clyde Edwards, a layer. I'm willing to take that risk, especially when I only have one running back. Do you have any concern based on Tuesday's discussion about the lack of organs that he currently possesses? I think it's going to help him. I okay. really do. I think getting that, getting that gallbladder out. Yeah, if we really broke that down you in know, a big way. Next, it may, next, maybe it'll be the regular bladder. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you need that one. Well, I mean, TBD. <laughs> So here I am, and I've got a real debate in my head, and honestly, maybe you guys can help me make it. I've got Joe Mixon and Clyde Edwards-Alaire 
uh, which are fine. I love Joe Mixon. I'm questionable about Clyde Edwards. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. I've got Stephon Diggs and T. Higgins, which I I really like that pairing. And tight end is fine. Quarterback. If you have drafted an early tight end, which I have done, do not draft another early quarterback. It's not even in consideration. No matter who's on the board, I need running backs and wide receivers. So I like the wide receivers better. If I were to take one here personally, it would be Hollywood Brown. I think he's got really high end potential, which would be after Hopkins in this draft. Uh, which to each their own. Yeah, I would like the guy playing the first six weeks on my <laughs> on my roster. Um, and then at running back, I would be looking at Kareem Hunt or uh, potentially. Um, uh, where where is he? Damian yeah. Harris. Okay, I was verifying that he is still there. Um, those two running backs are both fine, and then after those running backs, it just drops off a cliff. I don't want to be dealing with James Robinson coming off of yeah, no, thank you. an Achilles, or uh, you know, I know Andy, you like AJ Dillon. You might be looking at him here. So based on everything I'm saying, there are plenty of wide receivers I like that I can get later. Um, there aren't a lot of running backs I can get later. So I'm going to take an upside play here, uh, even though I think that uh, Damian Harris is safer. Kareem Hunt was the running back seven until he got injured. He's getting a quarterback upgrade for the majority of the season, and he's an excellent running back. I will take the pass catching running back from Cleveland. So I now have Stephon Diggs and T. Higgins at wide receiver, Joe Mixon, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Kareem Hunt, and George Kittle at tight end. Elijah Mitchell went next. He was who I was hoping would somehow fall to me in the middle of the sixth. Godwin finally goes. Could be a rocky start, but a nice finish. And Mike, it's time to make a pick. So the the two running backs I would be looking at here, I also like AJ Dillon a uh, a ton. And but Miles Sanders is here on the board and he's just he's so interesting of he was playing extremely well running for over five a carry just he didn't score any touchdowns and uh, I mean he got banged up again unfortunately so those are the two running backs I'm looking at there is a wide receiver uh, a little bit lower on the ADP that I think I'm just gonna be okay playing the game being at the nine spot I'm going uh the draft is moving away from me so I have quite a a weight, and I, I don't think any of these running backs are possibly going to make it back to me. So my running back three, man, I'm going to go. With, I'm going to go with Miles Sanders here. It's a it's so razor thin for me between uh, Miles and AJ Dillon, but I think that at the end of the day, Sanders' upside, should everything go right, is higher than AJ Dillon's. All right, Miles Sanders to Mike. Ken Walker goes next. Allen Robinson, Adam Thielen, and Damian Harris. Adam Thielen in the middle of the sixth is a value. And for the second wide receiver for that team, that seems like a steal. Hollywood Brown is still there. Ooh. Until now. He is on my <laughs> roster. I'll take Hollywood in with the ninth pick of the sixth round. Um, Amon Ra went next. Dalton Schultz, Goddard, Prescott, Patterson, who was my dream to come back around in the seventh round. And then Drake London. So the two Falcons go back to back here. And I am on the clock again. Dalton Schultz going was the last tight end of consideration for the middle rounds for me, and he's gone. So it, it, tight end is not in consideration. Obviously, quarterback not in consideration anymore. Rubber meeting the road here with a player that I was hoping somebody else would take like four times so far, which Ooh. is A.J. Dillon. Because really? staring down A.J. Dillon... Look, I, I love like, A.J. Dillon. I feel like you'd be really happy to get him here. But he does... you know. It, Yes, I, and I'm going to take him okay. in the middle of the seventh now, round. You but, do have Aaron Jones. Is that your concern? That's the problem. Oh, right. The problem right, right, is right. I have Aaron Jones, and so my hope was to get Cordero Patterson, diversify, not cap my upside. But in the seventh round, on an offense that I think is going to be 80% A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, I get a built-in insurance policy combined with the upside. Dang it. Chilling. I just feel better going Dylan. Team six got me. Burks. Uh, team six got me. I got one name in a big <laughs> fuck, and it's Brandon Cooks. Yeah, Traylon Burks, Brandon Cooks, Tony Pollard, Garrett Wilson just went in the seventh. Mike, on the clock. Shoot, man. I will say, I'll just say it out loud, like one of the considerations I had here along with A.J. Dillon was Chase Edmonds and Rashad Penny. Those were two names that I thought were worthy of this round selection. 
So I don't know if they're in consideration for you, Mike. At wide receiver, Juju is on the clock. Or, I mean, on the board. Sure. Rashad Bateman. Yeah, I'm not into a Bateman as much as, as you guys are. Um, wide receivers like Gabriel Davis, I think, has a, a ton of upside should he really become a full-time featured guy in that offense. But Bateman already is. Yeah, but... I'm surprised that you would consider Davis over Bateman at all. I just I see regression coming for the passing attempts for the Baltimore Ravens, and... Uh, I have some. I have How many targets did Hollywood have last year? Wasn't it a hundred and oh yeah, hundred and forty something? Yeah, they, yeah, but the Baltimore Ravens, like we've never before last year, Lamar Jackson threw the ball like twenty four, twenty five times a game, and yeah. then a whole bunch of circumstances hit this team, and they had to throw a ton. I, I also think Devin Duvernay is a little bit forgotten in that offense. He's going to be more in that Hollywood type role. That doesn't mean he's going to be the number one target in the offense, but. It, it, like, I like Bateman. I've got him ranked pretty high. He'll be in consideration if he's still there when I'm on the clock. But it, it is worth at least noting that it's not like it's only Rashad Bateman left. All right. Um, I'm pretty close to the turn here. It's so there's only one team that has a quarterback. Team 10 here has Josh Allen. I don't think Jason would take a quarterback here. Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm at the point where it's like, I don't love love any of these players, ah. But playing the game right, I'm I'm gonna take Rashad Penny. Uh, just you know, fill in that that old running back room. Rashad Penny already dealing with a hamstring, but but all <laughs> Jason slams the table. Um, but Rashad Penny, if he's anything like anything close to he was, then at the end of the season there he'll be solid. Tyler Lockett, Jalen Hurts. Jason slamming the table. It's been a very visceral draft for Jason. Font size is flying all over the place. On the turn, he's hitting stuff. the table. There's been grim for those of you listening at home. There have been grimaces aplenty uh, from Jason. He's drafted somebody without a gallbladder. There's a lot going on. Yeah, and uh, no, I I wanted Jalen Hurts. I uh, you know I I talked about I I don't draft another quarterback high. We're in the seventh eighth round. I'm at I'm at the seven eight turn. Eighth round is fine for dra drafting a guy who you think has the potential to be the quarterback one. Agreed. He is my quarterback three on the board. If I could get him in the eighth round, I would have done that in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, Jalen Hurts goes one pick before me. So I'm looking at my roster. I'm thinking I need wide receivers. Uh, I only have two right now. And even though the offense isn't good, Darnell Mooney is a name we haven't really brought up. But, I mean, you got a guy who – has to be near 30% target share. Has to be featured. Has to be featured. There is no other choice. Um, and then I think... I'm, is this where I'm supposed to talk about Byron Pringle like you did Devin Duvernay and tell you that there are a lot of other options there? Sure, let's okay. have it. No, no, I mean, that's oh, it. that was it. That's okay. all you said. That's all you said is just don't forget he exists. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I will take Andy's my guy, uh, Mooney. So I'm going to look at who else is on the board. I like it. And even though I have Clyde edwards uh, I've got two Bengals. I'm going to take two Chiefs. I think Juju Smith-Schuster is, you know, in the eighth round, Man. is worth trying to take a shot at the number one wide receiver target for Patrick Mahomes. Singletary and Devontae Smith go next. Mike, you're back on the clock. It's so, I mean, like I, I understand who Juju is as a player. But to me, that seeing and this is that's not an uncommon thing for ADP is seeing Juju as the first Kansas City wide receiver. But the dude's on a one year, what like five million dollar deal, and meanwhile they signed a guy to a three year, thirty million dollar contract in Marquez Valdez Scantling, who's just it, it's interesting to me that the fantasy community is so confident in ADP wise projecting that Juju is the number it's one not, guy. It's not as surprising to me because of the way contracts go with age. And, you know, you had a guy like Emmanuel Sanders through the first six weeks last year on a one-year deal in Buffalo lead the way with a great quarterback. I think a lot of people expect Jarvis Landry to be heavily involved in New Orleans. He could easily be the number one wide receiver this and, year. And if you remember, the the uh, Juju contract had easy incentives to but get up to caps. $10 million. Sure. I'm just saying it was it was a fine enough contract. All right, and yeah, he came back last year from the injury. Already played a little on it. All Mike, right. you're on the clock. You, uh, you do need to take a quarterback and a tight end, but yeah, as two of the next four picks. I know what I have to do. 
So Arizona has an elite quarterback, and their elite wide receiver is not there for the first six weeks. You're taking Zach Ertz. I have to take Zach <laughs> Ertz. Oh, my word. Oh, somebody... What just happened? It's the right thing to do. Oh, my Is it gosh. ever, though, for you? No. <laughs> that is the most off-brand thing I've ever seen. Look, I'm trying to show the... <laughs> I'm trying to show the fantasy world that uh, that Pr it, pride uh, will not run my yes, right. I I will slightly remove the grudge here for Zach Ertz through the first six weeks. Hollywood is there, but uh, elite quarterback who's was drafted rounds and rounds ago, and Zach Ertz through the first six weeks could legitimately be the number one target for the Arizona Cardinals. At which point, as that six mark or six week marker is coming. I will bail out, and I will let someone else have Zach Ertz, but I think that he gets off to a very strong start. Maybe the upside isn't great, but his floor is going to be very safe. Mike. Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank I'm you. proud of you. I'm not proud of myself. Because that's the right thing to do, even though you think he's a disgusting player. <laughs> so I'm. Uh, you overcame your own emotions to yes. follow the analysis. I like it. Uh, I'm going to go with Chase Edmonds here in the late eighth round. Oh, that's fabulous. And I was hoping that Rashad Bateman would come back around to me in the ninth. Uh, he didn't. Renfro, Olave, Bateman, Gabe Davis, James Robinson, and Robert Woods. This is where I will take a shot at one of the rookies. Uh, Jamison Williams in Detroit, wide receiver. Look, you saw that they were capable of high pass attempts in a breakout end of season for Amon Ross St. Brown. Jamison Williams is more talented than Amon Ross St. Brown, in my opinion. So I will take a shot in the ninth round on one of the top drafted rookies. Russ, Deshaun Watson go next. Chase Claypool, Tom Brady. Mike, you have the floor. So, uh, like, Kadarius Toney is still there. Uh, I mean, I'm running out of picks. I do eventually have to take a quarterback, and the, the quarterback pool is... Who else does Mike hate that he could take Rapidly here? depleting. We I need to you... find the next... Well, player we, that he's never. There is a quarterback that he loves here that yeah. I would be surprised if he doesn't take. Well, I that's what I was looking at the game of Team Ten and Eleven. They've got the quarterback. Oh, that's true. Jason needs one. And, Carson Wentz. And I, I got you. <laughs> Ertz and Wentz back to back. Right. And, and I'm not as high on your guy as I you say. Are. You have at least been telling me that you don't like Trey Lance as much as I do. So I'm hoping that you're not just a, a liar face, and I'm taking your information as authentic. Well, that's you've got to do that in a draft. You've got to. You need to know the people you're drafting right. with and play accordingly. So uh, there is some wide receivers who <clears throat> I think are interesting. And at this point, I'll take the shot on a guy who could be Aaron Rodgers, number one ride wide receiver. Uh, he's basically the only guy on the team who has a – I mean, Cobb's there, but Lazard has a rapport with him. But Lazard profiles as the guy who could hit 10-plus touchdowns this year. What did he have last year? I think eight – uh, and down the stretch had at least a month of really strong fantasy production. I do think it's interesting from a team makeup perspective, you went with Lazard, which is a little bit more of a known commodity, versus doing what I did and taking a rookie and Christian Watson in that offense and seeing what happened. You only had Adams, Pittman, Sutton, who do have question marks, so I think going Lazard strategically made sense for you. Fryermuth, Gasicki, two tight ends off the board. Jason, back-to-back -back picks, your uh, – Back, Two of the last three picks of your draft. Back-to-back -back picks, I think it's going to be Javante, but Melvin Gordon going in the double-digit rounds is too good to pass up. He was a very good sure. fantasy option last year. They bring him back. And then, of course, you know, some people want to watch the world burn. I'm one of them. I'm taking <laughs> Trey Lance. Eat it, Mike. It's the 10th round. You know I'm going to do that. Know your teammates. You did say he, like, prophesied. Yeah. Know your teammates and then twisted the knife. Ah. Uh. And, and Mike, Sorry, you do Mike. have to take a quarterback in the next two rounds. Matthew Stafford uh, is off the board, so he's not an option. I, so Carson Wentz is still there is what I'm saying. So sometimes you gamble and you lose. Um, <laughs> there was only six picks, and I felt I, – I mean, I wanted Trey Lance, but I figured if Jason is, is uh, a Benedict Arnold mm -hmm. and yeah. takes him, then it's fine. I'll just take Matthew Stafford. Uh, Matthew Stafford did not make it back to me. Uh, so I guess I got to stop messing around with the quarterback position. Um, 
whatever. I'll take my stack. I'll take Derek Carr. I got Derek Carr and Devontae Adams. Derek Carr with the fresh new contracts. Could this be his year? He actually breaks into the top 12. Not likely, but there's always <laughs> is, a chance. Is the stack the reason you went him over Cousins? Because yes. Kirk Cousins is currently in my top 10 quarterbacks. I, I thought about taking him, but Trey Lance does offer more upside if it hits. Yeah, it w was 100% the stack. My rankings say go Kirk Cousins, but I wanted that fancy stack. All right, my final two picks. I'm going Ronald Jones, taking a chance that we're surprised. Oh, yeah, I like that pick. And then I, my final pick is going to be Cole Komet, uh, who is going to be, at a minimum, a huge part of this target puzzle, uh, albeit a small one. No, no, I'm 100% I'm in on that being a good idea. Like we, we said Darnell Mooney has to be featured in the Bears' offense. So does Cole Komet, who was... I th what were you in year three here of Cole Komet? Yeah, it's looking real. I'm starting to starting to get pretty excited about the target share for Cole Komet. Exactly, the path is there, and you saw and touchdown. Maybe he scores. What if he right. scores a touchdown this year? I mean, Cole Komet saw over 90 targets in his second year. Just didn't score. Just yeah, exactly. Just didn't. Which but but Jimmy Graham is in. gone. Is he gone or is, no? He can't possibly be gone. Jimmy Grandpa is forever. I, he is a free agent. Yeah, he's I a, believe he's a corpse. <laughs> okay. Thank you, oh, Kyle. On. Thank you. Jimmy Grandpa forever. All right. I'll take uh, the number one wide receiver for Patrick Mahomes. Sky Moore? Nope. Mark was Valdez. Oh, scaling. well, I'll McCall take Hardman? Sky Moore. Uh, did McCall got... Hardman get drafted? No. Yeah, Hardman got drafted. So, did he? So that, it just illustrates the madness in Kansas City because yes. Hardman could legitimately be the one. It is it is possible. You know, the way they talk about him, you, you want to put trust in – the Patrick Mahomes, Clyde edwards alaire talk from years ago. He's talking about McCall Hardman. You have MVS. You have Juju. You have Sky Moore. Obviously, Travis Kelsey's the right answer, but it's crazy that there are four potential shots, and they're going to go very, very late in drafts. They're going to go late, and Patrick Mahomes is going to throw for over 4,040 touchdowns. And the most realistic option is that it gets split up, and there isn't one of these guys that's a superstar we're all hoping for a Tyree Kill replacement, but he's probably going to spread the ball around, and they're all going to be decent, not great. Give me one word to describe drafting from the 12th spot, Jason. Uh, scary. All right, Mike, one word to describe drafting from the 9th spot. Uh, delightful. Oh, you, you enjoyed it? I did. Okay. I would say I'm content at 104 or happy. That would be my description. Yeah, so I, my team, my final team here, Alva Kamara, Devontae Adams, James Conner, Michael Pittman, Cortland Sutton, Miles Sanders, Rashad Penny, Zach Ertz, Alan Lazard, Derek Carr, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling. All right, Cooper Cup, Mike Williams, Hollywood Brown, Jamison Williams at wide receiver, Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, A.J. Dillon, Chase Edmonds, Ronald Jones at running back, Herbert's my quarterback, Komet is my tight end. I've got Trey Lance at quarterback, Joe Mixon, Clyde Edwards, Alaire at my starting running back, Stephon Diggs, T. Higgins in the wide receiver, George Kittle at tight end, and then a bench, or I guess a flex of Kareem Hunt, bench of Darnell Mooney, Juju Smith-Schuster, Melvin Gordon, and Sky Moore. All right, it's underdog fantasy time. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Every week leading up to the season, we'll be given tips, insights, observations, uh, and the like for best ball on Underdog Fantasy. Uh, it is growing in popularity every single year. And so, Jason, I will hand you the baton. You can take today's Underdog Fantasy best ball breakdown. Yeah, I think today is is really... We'll just give a quick over. We may have some new players here who are not familiar with the format. Sure. So uh, we, we've been playing best ball forever. It's such a great format. In, with Underdog, what you do is you can draft a, a lineup. Each lineup is 18 spots. You can be in a three-person league, a six-person league, 10, 12... Uh, you can use them as you know a, a, a way to practice for your league because there's a little bit of money on the line, um, or you can join like a massive tournament. There'll be the, a lot of money on the line. <laughs> the Best Ball Mania Three, we're crowning millionaires over there. You've got a 450,000 entry tournament with 470 team Week 17 final, and you're you're playing to make it to the playoffs and ultimately win a lot of money uh, if you do. And we want the Foot Clan to take down the best ball mania three that's our goal so we're giving you tips so that you know how to construct your roster 
to compete the best, and it's a blast to do it along the way. So here's some data from last year's Best Ball Mania that we thought was worth highlighting the importance of roster construction. There are boo-boos you can make that just basically say you're you're not going to be in contention. So we're going to be talking about advance rates, basically how often uh, a player or a, a construction got you to those playoffs that you're trying to get to, how often those things win. So you've got 18 players. Let's start with quarterbacks. At quarterbacks, you want two or you want three. That's your goal. Two or three quarterbacks. Those are the highest win rates. Teams with two total quarterbacks had the highest advance rate last year, 17.5%. For frame of reference, 20% is God mode. That is fantastic. Um, if you draft later, like let's say you go four. You go four quarterbacks. Well, that really means that later in your draft, you're like, oh, I don't know. It's late. Drew Locke is there. He could be the starting quarterback. I take him. Maybe he is the starting quarterback. But what you're sacrificing are more important positions. Grab two or grab three and then be done. Get out. At running backs, five or six running backs had the highest advance rate. Both roster constructions had a 17.1% win rate. Well, running backs get injured. So if you got four studs and you think you're good, you're probably not. Get five or get six. But Wide receivers, I think, are the most important in best ball. This is very, very important. Six wide receivers is the minimum, and I would personally never stop at six. No teams made the best ball mania finals with fewer than six. Yeah, you just can't do it because wide receivers aren't consistent. And best ball, what happens is you, you're not putting a lineup together. It's just taking your best lineup from every score on your team and plugging in what would happen. So if you shotgun the wide receiver position – um, eight or nine wide receivers had the highest advance rate last year, then you've got more chance for just those rando hits of a big bomb touchdown week getting in your lineup. So stack a lot of wide receivers on your on your team. And with tight ends, teams with three tight ends, they had the highest advance rate to the playoffs, but two tight end teams had more upside to get to the semifinals and finals because, not because, oh, two is better than three, but because they probably – had an extra wide receiver. Mm -hmm. So uh, two or three quarterbacks, two or three tight ends, five or six running backs, and then fill them with wide receivers. It's going to be an exciting year. Very. Uh, run that back again, the summary of the so, spots. In summary, you've got 18 spots. You want two or three quarterbacks, two or three tight ends, five or six running backs, and then the rest stack them with wide receivers. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start playing on Underdog today, right now. They'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLERS. That is going to do it for us here today. First mock draft in the books. We did it. Hit me one more time with a makalaka. Oh, no. Makalaka ding dong. Yeah, baby. Well. It's time. We did it. <laughs> It's time. <laughs> June is almost here. The Ultimate Draft Kit is almost here. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Very excited to show you the new app. It's going to be a very fun season. Take care, Foot Clan. Thank you for tuning in, listening, supporting, reviewing, all of that good stuff. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.